Um, first of all, the the universal connector is a smile. So when you meet somebody or you're in a situation where it starts to get heated, smile. Empower Nation. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I'm your host, Angela Duncan. Today's episode, I get to interview Machori Hope, and she is a best-selling author. We're going to talk about how to connect through our differences and why your smile might be your best asset. Today's episode is sponsored by morewithangela.com, bringing private investment opportunities from the wealthy to you every single day, teaching you how to earn passive income. We're talking double digit passive income, true passive income. Visit morewithangela.com, book a call with me directly and let me help you on your passive income journey. Keep more, make more, live more. Hi, Majari. Welcome to Empower Her Money podcast. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited for you to kind of share your story. Let's start off with that, because I know you've done a lot of amazing things, but I'd love to know how you got to what you're doing today. Well, Connect Diplomacy uh, is a book I wrote, and it's about connecting people through our differences. And the way I got to that is from my traveling around the world, what I notice is that in every situation, people are people. And I had a lot of situations where I was like not sure how somebody was going to react to something. I, I was on a train in Dubai, for example, and I see a sheik looking at me and I thought, uh oh. And I said, I hope I haven't said anything to offend you. And he went, oh, no. He said a really funny thing. He said, I only care about money. <laughs> so I laughed and I said, well, I, you know, I said, I noticed in town, some people didn't seem to like me. He said, no, those are the older people that aren't as used to the internet. So they're not used to your culture. And I said, well, I said, that's so interesting because I love to learn about your culture. And could we get a picture together? And I said it so quickly. I didn't really think that through. And I thought, well, as different as we were, he was a man, I was a woman, he's a sheik, I'm from America. Our ideologies were so different. And yet he said, yes. And in the picture, Angela, he gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> and, and right then and there, I knew that I was onto something because at the end of the day, we all live on planet earth and it's the only place we can live right now. Yeah, that's awesome. And the connecting uh, is a great you know, way to kind of think about it because even though you are very different backgrounds and cultures and stuff, there is something in common that we can find amongst each other and having that connection, I think is very important to us. Exactly. And I, I think it's more about connecting through our differences because we all are so different, but you see, that's okay. The thing we have to remember is to respect each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's really about is the respect, which is so very important. Yeah. So let's dive a little bit further. What made you decide that you wanted to write a book? Well, Okay, so I was involved in a situation where I was pretty heavily involved in politics. And during the pandemic, I started noticing little changes that just didn't seem right to me. Mm -hmm. And when I kind of mentioned little things on social media about how we really ought to start respecting each other and we need to stop, you know, all of this animosity, I actually got death threats from people that couldn't believe I was saying something different from them. Now, keep in mind, I wasn't a stranger to these people. My Facebook page had 5,000 people on it that were not happy that I was not believing what they believed in anymore. And that gets me, if you want to talk about social media disconnect, <laughs> that that's a, a great example of that, because although it does connect us, it can disconnect us. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's so easy for us to put our opinion online too. Well, and, and that's actually how I got into what I was doing because I was really, I was sad. I was hurt. I was shocked. And I'm like, these, you have to understand something. These were people I had lunch with. I had dinner with at different events around the country. I knew these people and they were so hard set on what they believed in. They weren't taking time to look around. And, and a lot of that is fear. And it's false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going through in our world right now because things are changing. And we do have a lot of changes that are actually are exciting. And it's a brand new, exciting world where we're connected. And it's the old saying where you get more than by yourself. So the more people we have in our world, which is why we need lots of circles in our life, these are the reasons that are great reasons to what's happening. But you see a lot of people don't like that and they want us to stay the same. Understand that change can be scary, mm -hmm. but we just have to do it anyway. Yeah. So let's take that theme into the business world, right? So a lot of my listeners, female entrepreneurs, and we talk about money and business. Can we take that connection piece and bring it into the business world? What, what advice could you give to our audience? So... Just as individuals and businesses must practice financial discipline, uh, you know, to achieve stability and success, um, people need to manage their finances responsibly to maintain economic stability. And, and a lot of this is, um, and, and diplomacy, by the way, pay, plays a very crucial role in negotiating trade agreements, managing debt, building economic cooperation, uh, it promotes sustain, you know, sustainable economic growth and stability worldwide. So this is something people have to understand that creating values for countries through collaboration, partnerships, alliances, and by emphasizing shared goals and mutual benefits, we actually really can get stronger and promote through this peace, stability, and prosperity on a global scale. And when I think about that too, I think about, you know, how to best approach that connectivity because it can be scary. So what advice would you give to kind of make sure that we are approaching that relationship or that connection the best way? Um, first of all, the, the universal connector is a smile. So when you meet somebody or you're in a situation where it starts to get heated, smile. And, and it's there's an old uh, saying from thousands of years ago, what people, when they first started diplomacy, they would have people sit around the table and give them food. And the reason for that, and we, and we do this today too, is because they had to put their swords down. And in order to put the swords down, they had to eat the food and talk and discuss and collaborate. And a lot of times what you'll find is things aren't really so different after all. Or you might find, gee, you know, that, is kind of an interesting idea. I hadn't thought about it that way. And that's what cooperation and diplomacy is all about. And our cultural differences, absolutely they're there. They're never gonna go away and that's okay. We learn from each other and we gain from each other. And like I said, we only can't really go anywhere because we only have one planet and we are all so connected. I, I heard somebody, by the way, Angela, the other day say, oh, look, we have an ocean in between us. We, we yeah, physically, sure, we do. But we are so connected with the internet on Amazon. I mean, look, everything you're wearing right now came from a different country. Our phones are from different places. Our chips are from a different country. And and that's okay, but it's like, we're so connected right now. And listen, that's a great thing that we have to understand that we are in a different situation, which is a great situation. I, I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, if we hadn't had Amazon where I could order things all over the world, I don't know what I would have done. Except for toilet paper. Yes. <laughs> And I like that too. That's a great point about this smile. You know, I like to believe that I am a positive, happy person, and that's my responsibility to kind of share that. Um, I do have family in New York and they would disagree with that because they say, if yes. you're smiling, you're up to something. But outside of some of that cultural norms, I think the smile 
is just something that says, hey, I'm coming to you genuinely, open-heartedly, and like, like let's connect and have a conversation. And I, I'm, I don't have, you know, other intentions, but really I'm just trying to be a happy, positive person and share that. And, and you know, it is a step-by-step -step process, but also back to the smile and people that in certain uh, cultures do distrust it. I actually don't believe that. And I'll tell you why. I mean, I believe that that can be true to an extent, but I also believe we're human beings. And when you genuinely, and I'm not talking about a fake smile, like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do it tomorrow. But I mean, you generally smile at somebody. Your body language can actually implicate, gee, I'm open to you. I want to be your friend. And also when you travel to other countries, whether it be business or pleasure, you need to respect their customs. In Japan, you know, arigato, konnichiwa. And, and these are things that are, you know, just basic uh, when they bow their head and, you know, say that it's a basic custom. And, you know, we need to respect each other and the way we do things. And I think that smile can help in that direction because your body language is going to be open and they will feel that. Yeah. And it doesn't take long for us in today's age to figure that out. You know, if you're traveling to a country, you can hop on YouTube, do a basic search and learn in 10 minutes, you know, what could be proper and inviting and welcoming in a country. So we really have and no excuse anymore. Exactly. And you know what? It's also thinking, it's going to sound funny, like a child. So when I was in Japan, um, we were touring the government center. And afterwards, in Washington, D.C., for example, there's a cafeteria right nearby. And I thought, oh, we were hungry. And I thought to my son, let's get something to eat. There must be something around. And we did. We found a cafeteria. And we see a group of people all surrounding this one man. And now, normally, an adult might say, well, I better be respectful and not you know, go in there. But I had kind of the opposite. This is where my son said, I'll, I'll be outside waiting for you. But <laughs> I went up to like, I guess you'd say like a maitre d' and I said, you know what, what's going on over there? And he said, well, that's the prime minister. And, he, you know, he's with a group of people. Oh, I said, can I go say hello? Mm -hmm. So he said, well, I can't go over there, but if you want to, thank you is all I needed to hear. And I went right over. And you know what? Honestly, he was so nice. Hmm. And I said, hello. I, I did my, you know, Japanese um, konnichiwa. And I said, I'm from America. I am so excited to meet you. He was amazing. He And he spoke really good English. And he said, I, I'm glad you're here. You're having a good time. I said, absolutely. This is wonderful. And honestly, Angela, at that point, nothing else would have mattered <laughs> the rest of the trip. I was so excited to meet him. But that was my point. He was friendly. He was open. And I believe he could tell, and you can tell this, you know, if you think about it, when you talk to someone from your body language, you know, this is somebody that's happy to meet me. You know, why not say hi? Um, and, and if we all did this with the rest of the world and maybe eat a piece of chocolate, bring mm -hmm. chocolate with you, it always works. Um, <laughs> but people will be open to you. Yeah. So for you, the book obviously had in, its intentions and purpose. Um, how else are you sharing your gifts with the world? Yeah. So, okay. One interesting thing about the book is I had friends of friends and, and people in different countries all write in. I don't know if I told you this part about why they think we should have, you know, connection in our world. Now, interestingly, a lot of people, I actually had over a hundred countries write in and some in broken English, um, but they all said exactly, not even, not even one said anything different. We need to connect with each other to have peace in our world. I had one girl from Iran and she wrote in and said, if you use my name, I will be killed. Please reassure me and then you can use this. So of course I did. And then in the book, I wrote name withheld per request. But she said, we do need to have a connection with each other in order to have peace. And everyone said the same thing. And I thought that was extraordinary. Yeah, in other parts of the world, knowing that the the um, similarities that we can still have in common, even though we're such different instances. And I think post COVID, we could really see that connection piece too. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's money makes the world go round. And so with, you know, without money, you can't eat, you can't have a shelter and things like that. But 
around the world, everybody has access to money in a different way. You know, in, in like, for example, if you're in Africa, you may not have a bank account. You may not have a bank or even access to a bank, which mm -hmm. is why cryptocurrency has, has come in to play. Uh, one, one reason why, which is, can be helpful because now they're on a playing field. Um, of course, there's a lot of kinks to work out with that, but it's, um, you know, but that's what I mean about connecting around the world. It gives us more access to connect with everybody. Yeah. So what's next for you in your journey? Um, I'm actually uh, writing a book, which is a ways away now, but connecting with each other through the table. So years ago, people would connect through the dinner table, for example. We all got so busy and we all started doing so many other activities and, and also fast food. This was a re see, there was no fast food years ago. So you had to come together at the table to talk over your values and your ideas and what you all agreed on really basically at that table. Once fast food came in, it really, there was no need to have to sit down together. And people started working different jobs, different schedules. And we need to somehow bring back at least an opportunity to meet at the table. And it, whether it's dinner, lunch, a big group, a little group, um, those table discussions where you're having something to eat because you relax, you calm down, and you're able to really sit down and say, what's going on here? And it really does work really like that too. And I would like to be invited to the table. I don't cook. So I'll, I'll come and bring like a, I don't either, but I promise you we'll get good carry out or somebody to cook for us. And we'll have a lot of interesting people. It's yeah. who will we invite, but we'll invite as many as we can. Yeah. Sounds good. I love that. So it's not, you know, that's me getting into the weeds and the details where you you're the idea and the concept is the most important piece. Exactly. Awesome. We can do it. Yeah. Awesome. So I have a fun question for you. If you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, I love this question. I would say to be able to fly because I would fly to every place in the world to say, hello, how are you? Let's join together. That doesn't mean we have to accept everything, but it means we can respect everything. And I'm telling you, if we all took the time to do that, if we could all fly, I really think, you know, we'd be in a different situation than right now where we're all kind of having a lot of division in the world. Almost like a mini speed networking event because, you know, you could meet a whole bunch of different people within a short amount of time with that ability. Uniting us all. Yeah. Awesome. So if our audience wants to get in touch with you, learn more about your book or what you're doing, how do they reach you? Um, they can uh, get in touch with me anytime at it's ITS Marjorie Hope at MarjorieHope.com. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. Thank you so much for tuning into Empower Her Money podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe share this podcast and leave a review wherever you are tuning in.